What's up my friends, welcome back to a brand new video and today we are taking a look at Sonokinetic's orchestral strings. So this was a big leap for them in their orchestral sampling world because if you know Sonokinetic, they're really known for their phrase libraries and they do a lot of orchestral stuff but a lot of it has been in the phrase category. And so when they kind of release their upcoming multi-sampled string library that's playable completely, uh, equipped with a runs builder and some phrase stuff as well. Um, I think a lot of hype was being built up and it's been released for a little while now, but they were very kind to send me a copy for review and some great news. I'm doing a giveaway for this library and their accompanying Sordino strings as well. So stick around for that. I'll share some more details on how to enter the giveaway at the very end, but this video is more of like an overview of the library itself. And then I'll share with you a small little demo I used, or sorry, I made with a library so we can get um, straight into it. All right, so let's take a quick look right here at the specifications. They show us that there is about 97 gigabytes of content, so it's about 100 gigabytes. Um, pretty, pretty, you know, nice and hefty for a string library. Definitely larger than something like Cinematic Studio Strings, um, so it's, it's definitely up there. Then the actual instrument list patching is uh, pretty pretty simple. You have each of the sections, uh, first, second violins, violas, celli, and basses, but then you also have the first and second violins mix, and then you know the violas, celli, and basses mix as well. So we're primarily going to be taking a look at the mix patches today, just to get a sense of the sound. And then finally, the, the actual instruments themselves. So it says one orchestral string section recorded in DVC. Now this is kind of the standout feature of the library. There's auto DVC and it was recorded as such as well. So 16 first violins, 9 and 7, uh, 12 violins, 2, uh, 7 and 5, 10, vi 10 violas in 6 and 4, and then 10 celli, 6 and 4, and then 8 basses, 5 and 3. So basically whatever you're playing, if you play polyphonically, like two notes at one time, you're going to get that DVC split up in those sections, so 9 and 7 for first violins, for example. And so it thins out the section in half, essentially, and you get a nice defined sound. But DVC is great because it allows you to basically create more voices and more uh, harmony parts, for example, in your string arrangements to fill out the chord even more. And so if you really want to, you can go into all of the playthrough videos on their website and you can check out their YouTube channel for more information on that as well, followed by a ton of demos. And then they have some info here about how they actually came up with the library and all that. So without further ado, let's kind of jump in. I've pulled up the patches here. Let me quickly show you the actual folder structure right here. So here we have the orchestral strings. Below that, I've loaded in the Sordino strings. These are both contact player libraries, by the way. So uh, you don't need the full version of contact, which is awesome. Uh, I, I've already mentioned before, though, that having the full version of contact is a good thing. I definitely think you should have it just in case, um, but because there's a lot of libraries that are great, but just don't use the full version of contact. Uh, sorry, the, the contact player. But in this case, let's take a look. So again, you have the five sections here, and then you have those same five sections, but the mixed versions. And again, it's very, very simple. And then essentially the same thing for the Sordino library here. All right, let's have a listen to the first violins. Uh, first, I'm going to play monophonically, uh, go through some of the articulations. Uh, I'll also play poly 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 yeah, polyphonically so you can hear the uh, polyphonic legato and the DVC and hear how this, the sound kind of thins out just a little bit when we do that. All right, we're going to start with the expressive sustains and legato. Here we go. Violins one. Uh, make sure I'm on the right track. There we go. Perfect. Okay, here we go.
All right, that's a little overview of all of the different articulations uh, for the violins one at least. And it's, it's very consistent across all the different sections, by the way. So as far as I'm aware, the articulations are essentially identical. Now it's a very interesting workflow because you can select the different categories of articulations by key switch. So at the very bottom of the keyboard, you have, um, we'll, we'll talk about the different modes in just a second, but you can select the different type of articulation you want. And um, the green part here, the dynamics, is what is macro applied or basically generally applied to these different articulations. So if I want to play sustains, then I, I want to make sure I'm on the C key switch. And you can see here this little triangle tells me I'm on this category. Then I can select the type of sustain I want. I can also use the sharps and the flats to key switch between them. Let's say we want the expressive uh, sustain, right? Then the dynamics are now mapped to the mod wheel. But if I want to change that, I can click, you know, sforzando crescendo, which automatically applies that. So it shows the dynamic automatically sforzando and then dips down, then crows back up, right, to crescendo. So it's really interesting because the dynamics you can select here will apply to any articulation that you're selecting over here in the red part. So it's a nice distinction to have, you know, the red and green difference there. Something else that's really cool is the way that they talk about or they they um, present stereo within stereo panning, right? So here you can see that it's it's basically been done in a to the left bias type of manner. And by the way, up and down is just level. So if I play a G, bring this down, it gets quieter and quieter. Obviously it gets louder if you bring it up. So if you wanna make it more mono, you can bring this dot back to the middle and now it's very kind of in the center. Right? If I want to make it more left bias, I can spread it out. Now the stereo width is biased to the left. If I want to spread it to the right, I can do this. And now it's very stereo. You can hear it very clearly. Let's make it more to the right. And see, that's, that's a very, very simple drag and drop way to do stereo panning for yourself. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's just really nice to be able to do that. Now, you don't have the flexibility of a ton of mic positions because keep in mind, these are the mixed versions of the patch. So this is the pre-designed mix that they come with, these patches. But if you really want to go and tweak your own microphone positions, then you can do that with these first five patches over here. Uh, let's kind of go back here and... Uh, oh yes, let's, let's take a quick look here at these other modes. So, well, first of all, I mean, the phrases, I don't typically do phrases myself, so I re won't really touch on this today, uh, but definitely check out the official Sonic Kinetic YouTube channel to find out how the phrases really work. Um, but the, the, the runs part is really interesting to me. So this, this mode basically gives you the four instructions of how to actually do this. You play and hold a note in a playable area, which is kind of in the middle. Then you can play another key, right? And then the run will play between the notes. And then you can chain runs by playing legato and the scale will update on the fly when you play chords in the chord area. So let's take a look at this. Let's go to uh, the runs area. Let me just play something. Here we go, a yellow chordal range. If I play a G major chord, now it's gonna be playing a G major scale. So uh, let's just play a G to a G. Right, now I can go back down to a G. 
and it's going to do the run back down to the G. Let's let's kind of play a little bit here. Okay, now that sounded a little bit weird there because I played an F natural by accident. It should have been just an F sharp, um, going up to the F sharp, and then finally G to G again. And you can also choose the type of articulation you want to play during the run. So you know, if we go back into the settings, I think it's here, uh, you can click sustain and then you can choose the actual articulation you want. You can choose, let's say, staccatissimo, and then you can hear it super short because you're, you're you know, altering the different articulation there. But yeah, it's a super simple way to do runs, right? It doesn't even have to be an octave. It could be like a fifth, it could be a sixth. And the direction of the run depends on which note you play first. So if I play the bottom note first and then the top note, the run will go up. But if I do vice versa, top to bottom, then it literally the run goes top to bottom. And this run is also synced up to your DAW tempo as well. So you don't have to worry about adjusting it on the fly. But there you go, it's it's super uh, intuitive actually, and I really enjoy this runs mode. Um, you could argue that maybe it doesn't sound as realistic as a pre-recorded run, which could be true, uh, but if you if you want to have a run and a texture that's kind of buried back in the mix a little bit and just enhances the overall texture, then realism doesn't really matter as much there, but it just gets the job done in a very quick and intuitive way, which I really enjoy. And one really quick note about the overall sound, because that's really the most important thing. I personally love the way this library sounds. Um, it, it has such a live and authentic feel to it that something like Cinematic Studio Strings or even like, let's say, Spitfire Appassionata or uh, I don't know, other string libraries have a hard time matching the natural and lively feel this, of this library to me. Um, the only one that kind of comes close is kind of like Berlin Strings, you know, BSS, Berlin Symphonic Strings. That has a very live feel as well in the Teldex scoring stage. But this one just has that beautiful sound that you can really hear uh, when you're playing those sustains, that, that resonance in the hall really comes through. So the kind of the mix they did here sounds gorgeous. All right, let's quickly move on here through the other articulations, or sorry, the other patches, other instruments, and then we will uh, go through the demo. All right, so I'm going to play a little legato here. All right, these are all of the mix patches, okay? So to me, they all have a very consistent sound because of course they're all recorded within the same hall and they have the same articulation. So 
creating a string arrangement from this library is actually really easy. Now, let's take a quick look at the non-mix patch. I'm just gonna use Violence 1 as an example, and you'll notice instantly there's a much fuller sound here, and uh, the great thing is you can actually mix and match the mic position. So let's just start with the Decatree and see what that sounds like, and then we'll kind of have a playthrough of the close uh, microphones. So here we go, this is the Decatree. So kind of a nice full sound there, but now let's hear the close. And blending them is really easy because you just click deck a tree or click whatever mic position you want to add in and then it has both. So let's say you want the deck a tree a little bit louder than the close, you can certainly rise it up. And let's say I want to bring down the close a little bit. Maybe I want it to be the, maybe I want the close to be a little bit more mono so I can narrow that in there. Let's hear what this sounds like. I apologize for the uh, little delays there um, because of the slow sample loading, but you get the idea of the mix and match um, miking uh, system. So I really enjoy this type of working, actually. This type of workflow makes a lot of sense to me. I'm just a visual learner, visual worker, so it just makes sense for my style. Um, yeah, and then let's quickly take a listen to the Sordino strings. We're just gonna listen to the Violence 1 and the Celli here. Um, so yeah, here we go. Um, now, I believe these were not recorded with true legato. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's a scripted legato, but it's very serviceable and it does the job. Um, so here are the expressive sustains. Yeah, so I mean, it's always nice to have the real thing. Like a lot of string libraries prefer to save on storage space. So they will give you a simulated uh, Sordino, right? Like CSS or B uh, Berlin strings or whatever. But Sonic Kinetic actually went the extra mile to actually record the real Sordino samples. And I believe this library is about 25, 26 gigabytes. So if you have the storage space for that, it's uh, certainly worth looking into if you need this type of sound. All right, let's have a quick listen to the demo I put together. Um, so what I did is I, I started the first half in a monophonic texture, and then I kind of wanted to test the limits of the Divisi. So I went through the second half and actually played more voices. You can see here, uh, you know, we we, st we added in two voices, and then at the very end, I kind of used three voices at a time to put it together, just to make it as full of a chord as possible. So without further ado, here is the demo. Just want to make sure I'm back on sustain for all of these. Uh, violins one, violins two, there we go. Violas, celli, and basses. Okay, cool, this should be good. Let's have a quick listen here.
All right, let's have uh, one more listen to this. I'm just gonna show you the MIDI here. Obviously it looks pretty spaghetti-like on the bottom with all that modulation data. So let's get rid of that. And then maybe we'll close this up a bit. Here we go. So you can see how, how kind of close range everything is at the very beginning. Of course, here we want to expand further in the second half. And this is like a nice little outro, essentially. And in case you're wondering how I'm still triggering the legato without overlapping these notes, I'm basically using the sustain pedal to hold the notes. So I play this chord, I press the pedal, I move my hand to the next chord, then I play it, and then the legato transitions activate as a result of that. So there we go. Um, I think you can handle up to as many voices as you want, honestly, but the way they recorded is ideally for two voices at a time for the DVC purposes, because that's kind of how they recorded those uh, two sections. So it's a really cool library, honestly, and um, a little unique in that regard, that it's meant as more of like a Devisi library. If you're looking for the most expressive, the most like romantic style library, this is probably not the, the very be uh, first choice I would go with. Maybe something like CSS or Vista has that dripping romanticism in it. This one has a more live concert feel and it works really well for like those subdued purposes, but they do have those higher dynamics that can also give you that uh, intensity if you really, really need it. But I think the, the really the draw to this library is the DVC functionality. Also the runs builder is exceptional. And uh, overall the sound is just wonderful to me. And so if you're looking for a library to give you that sense of space and that sense of reality and to layer maybe with some other string libraries you have that could be a little drier, then I think this is a great choice to consider. Um, let me know your thoughts though. Uh, is this something that you think you would personally use? Um, what do you think about this library in comparison to maybe other ones on the market or the ones in your palette? And uh, I'd, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that, your first impressions of this library, if you're kind of a newer a newcomer to this library specifically. But speaking of which, let's, let's get into the giveaway. So similar to the very last one I did, uh, the, the rules are very similar. There are just three things you need to do to enter the giveaway. Number one is to make sure you're subscribed to my email list, because again, this is where I share the winners every single time I do one of these giveaways. And I share exclusive content with you every single week to help your composing. And uh, the easiest way you can enter is simply to fill out the form below in the description box, fill in your name, your email, and the YouTube channel name. Be, uh, I'll tell you why in just a second. And then you'll automatically be entered in the system, okay? So that's step number one is to make sure you fill out that form below. Step number two is to leave a comment under this video and let me know what you would use this library for. Uh, let me know what style of music you would make with it and why you would enjoy using this library. I'd love to hear your thoughts there. That is step number two. And finally, step number three is simply to leave a like on this video. It really helps the channel. If you enjoy the work that I do, you wanna support me in any way, uh, leaving a like on the video really, really helps. And uh, those are the three simple things. So number one, again, just follow the form below, make sure you're on the list. Again, this is where I will share the winners and give you exclusive content every week to help your music and your composing. Number two is to leave a comment and let me know what you use the library for and maybe even thank Sonic Kinetic along the way because they do a great job and any support you can give them is also appreciated. And of course, number three, just leave a like on the video. It really helps the channel and I appreciate you for it. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to uh, give, look forward to giving, look, no, I look forward to giving this library away. I should clarify actually, um, they're not just giving the orchestral strings, they're also giving a copy of the Sordino strings separately, okay? So there's gonna be two winners. Uh, one person will win the orchestral strings, one person will win the Sordino strings. And so once you enter uh, and do these three steps, um, you'll be entered to win either one, if that makes sense, okay? I'll see you then, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, keep you updated on those results, but uh, just make sure you follow those steps and you'll be entered. All right, my friend, take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.